A properly defined tool description will help reduce setup time. On a previous Mazak Minute, we looked at turning tools. On today's episode, we'll take a deep dive into rotary milling tools. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Mazak Minute. I'm Mike Zilich, part of the HEH technical team. Let's get started on tool descriptions for rotary milling tools. First off, we need to get to the tool data screen. To do that, we're gonna go to our control, press the furthest most left arrow key, then press the tool data soft key. From there, on the tool data screen, you're gonna see it's broken up into two sections. On the left side, you're gonna have the turret numbers and the descriptions of the tools. And on the right side, you're gonna have the description of the current tool selected. In order to edit one of the tools, you'll first highlight the tool that you wanna edit. Then we will go down onto the soft keys, select edit and then finally go to Tool Data Assign. On the right side of the screen, you're gonna see a description of the tool. At the very top, you see, in this case, you see Tool Data, Tool Number 12. In that, you're gonna see the type of tool that we're describing, the operation or the out inside, the nominal size, the tool set, the actual diameter, the rotation of the mill spindle, wear comps, and tool life monitoring. Taking a look at the right side of the section of the screen, we're gonna break it up into sections. The first one is gonna be the tool type, okay? There you're gonna have end mills, face mills, chamfer cutters, ball end mills, other tools, tool probe, center drill, drill, back face, reamer, tap, boring bar, back boring bar, and finally chip vac. And the chip vac is not actually in the US market, but it is still displayed on our screen. So number two is a part. That identifies the direction of the tool. Here you'll have part out, edge, edge back. Taking a look at some of the input, support for input, you're gonna see the edge is gonna be on the front face of the part, the out would be on the outside of the part, the highlighted edge in magenta would be the milling tool for the second spindle. Number three, the nominal size of the tool, that's gonna identify the tool itself. In this case here, we have a basically a 5 16 end mill, and the nominal size can be two places to the right of the decimal. Hence, we have 0 0.32. Drilling tools, if you had a drilling tool identified, that would be the diameter of the tool. That's gonna be used to calculate out the RPM of the chuck. Tap, that's gonna be used to, that's gonna be the size of the tap and that's gonna be used to calculate the RPM of the tap. How do you enter the nominal size of a tap? I'm gonna do an example of a half 13. On the soft keys, you're gonna see a selection for metric unified pipe, and you'll see pipe PT, pipe PF, pipe PS. In our case here, we're gonna select unified. The denominator is gonna be the half inch. And finally, in the prompt box, we're gonna type in 1-13. Number four is the ID code. The ID code is used to identify multiple tool descriptions for the same turret position number. For a tandem tool, I'll have a A for the main spindle and a B for back for the second spindle.
Number five, the tool set. You see it says tool set X, tool set Z. This will be the tool measurements off of the tool eye. Number six, actual diameter. This is up to five places to the right of the decimal point. This is used to control cutter compensation. A screenshot from the support for input, you see the nominal size or, and the actual diameter. Notice the blue dot, that's gonna be the tool set measure point. Number seven is gonna be your mill spindle rotation. Okay, you're gonna see the soft keys down below. You're gonna have counterclockwise, clockwise, and then you have an angle counterclockwise, counterclockwise. There are some tool holders out there that have the gear mechanism where it has to run in reverse to run forward, and that's where that angle holder comes into play. If you have a Mazak milling head, they'll have a sticker on there that says ANG on it to help identify that holder. Number eight is gonna be the corner R of the radius of the bullnose on the end mill. Support for input, again here you see you have the blue arrow representing the spindle rotation. In the middle you see the angle and the very bottom you see a horizontal milling head. Counterclockwise and clockwise blue arrows for the spindle rotation. Length compensation is number nine. What that is is gonna be the length of, if you wanna comp the tool to go cut a little bit more stock. And what I like to tell people is I'll look at, think of it as a drill. Think of a drill tip as being a tip comp, and that tip comp is a positive value. So if it's a positive value, if I'm gonna take more stock off, it's gonna be a, a larger positive value. Number 10 is the wear comps. Here we can set the wear compensation uh, for the Z-axis comp and the Y-axis comp. It's one for one. It's important to know if you're in a XC mode in Mazatrol programming, it's not recommended that you use the X wear comp because it's not gonna give you a correct flat milled surface. Instead, they want you to use the actual diameter and then modify that size, and that will still give us the straight line. Number 11 is gonna be the maximum wear. That helps prevent uh, operators from typing in a number too large. Number 12 is gonna be the holder type. Here we can enter a holder number between one and four, or zero for none, okay? This holder's description is used for chuck and tailstock barriers. Descriptions of each holder can be found in the uh, machine-specific operating manual. I put a couple examples on my screenshots here, and what you're seeing is on a three-axis tool holders. You'll have your uh, turning tool holder be a number one, your horizontal milling head is a number two, vertical milling head, a number three, and a still getting back to the turning, a facing holder is a number four. Looking below the holder, you have a section called life. This is where we can monitor the tool life of the uh, cutting tool. The first we can do is a lifetime, and that's where I can set the maximum minutes that I want that tool to be allowed to cut. Number 14, the cut time, that's gonna be the actual number of minutes that the tool has run. And once it reaches the value of 13, the lifetime, it will flag it and it will highlight it in magenta. 15 and 16, we can also track 
the number of parts we machine with that cutting tool. 15 would be the maximum number of parts I want to machine with that tool and 16 would be the actual minutes used. 17 material, that's going to be the type of material of the cutter. You'll see that you'll have high speed coated carbide, carbide. And finally 18, a tool model that's used for uh, defining tool holders in a 3D model. Getting back to number 17 for uh, the cutting materials, you'll see that for drilling tools, you have that, again, that high speed drill, carbide drill, insert drill, tapping, tap, synchronous, ball mills, carbide ball, cement ball, and end mills, high speed end mill, carbide end mill, and insert uh, end mill. A couple screenshots of the individual tool descriptions. The first one we're going to take a look at is end mill. You have your tool sets, your actual diameter, mill spindle rotation. On the right side you see the blue dot. It's showing you that the uh, spot that you're going to touch off in the z-axis is going to be the tip of the tool. Chamfer tools. Here we're going to have the nominal diameter of the tool be the largest size of the chamfer. The tool set position, the mill spindle rotation, and the tool life. On the right side you see that the edge is going to be for the main spindle, out for the outside diameter, and the magenta edge is going to be for the second spindle. Tool data screens for uh, drilling tools. Edge is going to be the main spindle, out the outside diameter, and magenta edge is going to be for the second spindle. Just like the end mill, you're going to have the mill spindle rotation. The added uh, item is edge angle. That's going to be the included angle of the tip of the tool. And once you type in that angle, you'll notice that the length comp gets calculated out automatically. Tapping tool. Mainly you're seeing that you have the mill spindle rotation, but in this case towards the middle part of the left part of the screen, you have tap type. This is where we're going to tell the tool whether it is a rigid fixed tap or a floating holder. Different points that we can touch off on the tools. Again, this is a uh, item that I find useful for the operators. It shows the tip of the tool, where the dot is, is gonna be the location where I'm touching off the tool off of the tool eye. Center drill, the tip, reamer tip, uh, back spot face is going to be the tip of the tool, back spot, back bore tip, and so forth. One thing that's important is if you're touching off a tool off of the tool eye, and this is where you see tool set X and Z. If I touch the tool off on the edge of the tool, it's not the center of the rotation. Because we program in a diametral mode, you'll notice that what you will do is you will cursor to the tool set X and you're going to hit the increment input soft key. If I'm on the upper part of the tool eye, you're going to take the A, the tool set dimension, and you're going to subtract the diameter of the tool. The other case, if I'm coming from the bottom side of the tool setter, you would add the diameter of the tool. If you're using a vertical mill head, that's going to be a one for one ratio. So here you're going to see if I'm touching off the front edge of the tool eye, you see how it says B minus D divided by two. That's going to be your uh, diameter divided by two, which is the radius. Other things that you need to know 
with the tool data is with the uh, following tools, you also need to have them described in a tool file. End mills, ball mills, face mills, chamfer cutters need to be defined there. To get to the uh, tool file, you're going to hit your main chapter key, the furthest most left soft key, press the tool data soft key, and then finally on the right side, you will see tool file. Under tool file, you're going to see where it's going to show you uh, the screen that I have up is for end mills and ball mills. This is going to be the nominal size of the tool, which would be a two place decimal. Tool material, the depth, which is going to be the maximum depth of cut or the flute length of the tool, and the number of teeth. So, based on in the program, when it comes up with the uh, surface feet and the inches per rev, it looks at the number of teeth to calculate that out. For face mills, you're going to have the nominal diameter of the tool, the tool material, the depth flute length or maximum depth of cut. And if you look at your uh, tool vendors, a lot of times they'll refer to that as the AP distance. Teeth is going to be the number of teeth or the number of inserts. An angle is going to be the angle from the horizontal line. In the picture on the screen, you see a 45 degree angle. For chamfer tools, this is a little bit uh, different than the face mills. You're going to have the nominal diameter and that's going to be the large diameter of the tool. Then the next column is going to have minor diameter and that's going to be the smallest diameter of the insert on the chamfer cutter. Tool material, the depth or the maximum depth of cut, number of teeth, and the angle of the insert from the horizontal, just like we did for the face mill, it's coming off the horizontal and in the picture shown, 45 degrees. Understanding rotary milling tool descriptions will set your machining process up for success. If you have questions or a topic you'd like to review, leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the Mazak Minute.